for some groups, AI in itself might uh, lead to negative consequences. So the kind of a, an exponential version of the robot rebellion, where this deity version of the AI judges us, doesn't like us, gets rid of us. You described yourself as someone who thinks about what we, as in the general public, think about machines that think. Just so our viewers sort of have an idea of what it is you do, can you explain a little bit about what you meant by that? So I'm an anthropologist, which means I study humans, but I'm an anthropologist of AI. So I study humans trying to understand what this strange thing is that people keep talking about as a technology, but also how it impacts their lives and how they imagine it in various different ways. So it's not just the simple uses of AI, but also how it's imagined to be. As a field, it involves so many different aspects of technology, from facial recognition, diagnostic systems, uh, recommendation systems, and for the general public, all those kind of uh, details kind of get subsumed under this title of AI, which also reflects what we think of as the future of AI in terms of things like robots, uh, robot rebellions, uh, intelligent machines taking over. So is there anything we should be concerned about in AI? Is there sort of, you know, any sort of entrenched biases or um, are they going to take all the jobs? Everything that we create as humans reflects our context, our culture, our interests. And when it comes to algorithmic decision making systems, the data that we choose to input into them leads to certain outcomes. We can say rubbish in, rubbish out. But we also want to be very careful we don't personify AI so much that we decide it has agency that it doesn't really have. So we want to be very clear that there are always humans in the loop. I find the sort of uh, interpretation of it sort of becoming like an overlord quite interesting. Where do you think that comes from? And like, why do we immediately think that if an AI becomes that powerful, they'll immediately want to rule us and put us under the boot, for example? I think a lot of the time it comes from our assumptions about how we treat others. Like we have encountered other intelligences when we've spread around the globe, and I'm using the we for the sort of Western civilization. When we've spread around the globe and we've encountered indigenous cultures, we've not necessarily treated them particularly well. And we can see this same sort of thing scaling up. If we consider ourselves to be the most intelligent species on the planet and we've destroyed environments and we've made animals endangered, then why not an intelligence greater than us do the same thing to us? Or if we see the distance between ourselves and the ants as equivalent to the distance between a super intelligence and ourselves, then you know maybe it just doesn't care as well. It's going to react in a particular way beneficial to itself, but that might not be so beneficial for humans. Beth, are the robots going to take over? <laughs> I think it's actually more interesting that we keep asking that question, that we keep returning to this fear narrative, that we're concerned about the things that we're creating, how they might be like us in terms of intelligence, but also how they might be like us in terms of our bad traits, like our rebelliousness or our selfishness or our violence. I think a lot of the time it comes from our feeling that there should only be minds in certain places. So we get very concerned when we see something that's acting like a human, having the same level of intelligence or even the apprehension of sentience in a place where we're not expecting it. Talking about intelligence and human level intelligence, how far are we from making a machine that actually has that kind of, and how will we know when we've made a machine that actually has the same kind of level of intelligence as we do. It comes down to really what we conceive of as intelligence and how we describe success in AI. So for a long time, since the very conception of the term artificial intelligence, it's about being very good at doing simple tasks, bounded tasks in a very simplistic domain. And then over time, those domains become more complicated, but still it's about being successful. So the whole history of AI playing computer games, for instance, all the way from the simple boards of uh, tic-tac-toe and chess, all the way up to Go and StarCraft II, this is, this is developmental, but it's still framed around success and failure. And we need to ask, is that actually what we think intelligence is? Is intelligence being good at games of that nature? So what is the game that you think when a computer can play it successfully, it might have reached human level intelligence? Well, I am a massive and unrepentant geek and I really enjoy playing Dungeons and Dragons. And I think what's really valuable about that form of game playing is that it's collaborative storytelling. It's much more about the experience of playing together rather than success or failure. And I think if you could have an AI that could understand that collaboration, then you'd be much, much closer to something that we might think of as embodied intelligence or communal human intelligence. The problem arises that is that that might actually be the leap to artificial general intelligence to be able to do that 
Can you just explain a little bit what that actually means? So artificial intelligence generally at the moment is very narrow. It can do specific things very, very well, even to sort of super intelligent level that playing the, the Go playing system, AlphaGo, could beat a human already, but it can't do anything else. It can't get up from the board and decide to go and do something else entirely, so it's very narrowly focused. Artificial general intelligence is the idea of an AI that can do a number of things and move between them quite easily. So that can be used as a synonym for human level AI intelligence, um, and some people see it as the step just before some form of super intelligence or even the very mysterious thing people refer to as the technological singularity. And what is the technological <laughs> singularity? <laughs> well, the, the vision of intelligence that we work with generally in this discussion, it's, it's exponential. So the idea is if AI could reach human level intelligence, it might then surpass it into super intelligence and then perhaps go into an area that we don't even completely understand, where its intelligence is so far beyond our conception that it would be the equivalent of a cosmological singularity that you have in a, a black hole or at the beginning of the universe. And we don't know how to really conceive or describe that, but science fiction and tries to go there with ideas about uh, intelligent sentient machines that react in particular ways to humans, sometimes quite negatively. Or it could be that we're swept up into this form of intelligence and it becomes some sort of form of sort of secular rapture moment. Uh, and it becomes a very sort of utopian, heavenly describing words that are involved. So explain a little bit about what you mean by a technological singularity sort of becoming this almost deity-like figure. Okay, so for some people, it might be a literal transformation that this is as cl close to the existence of a god as we could get. And for others, it's more the metaphorical relationship between our idea of what a god should be and how powerful this potential singularity AI would be. So we've had ways of characterizing monotheistic deities as being omnipresent, omniscient, hopefully omnibenevolent as well. And when you start talking about this very very powerful singularity, it seems to have some of those attributes, at least in this theorising about it. What could the consequences of that be? Well, for some groups uh, that are generally described as transhumanists, that might be a very positive outcome, that actually they think this might be a route towards some sort of form of immortality in a different framework, that we might escape our physical bodies and become minds uploaded into the singularity space and therefore may live forever, be able to explore the universe and you know experience everything that is possible to experience. And for them, that's a very positive thing. And then others are concerned that a technological singularity as a singular entity, so an AI in itself, might uh, lead to, again, negative consequences. So the kind of uh, an exponential version of the robot rebellion, where this deity version of the AI judges us, doesn't like us, gets rid of us for various reasons. So there's, there's both sort of interpretations. What are the chances of us being creations of something with a level of intelligence that we've superseded. Again, it falls into those theological theistic patterns of ideas about a creator god, a superior entity that's created us, and therefore, you know, it's repeating that shape again. It also draws on some ideas about whether we live in a simulated universe, sort of in the style of the Matrix, because the argument goes that if we can create games of certain sophistication, what's to mean that a greater entity didn't basically create that simulation for us to live in? And those sorts of questions keep some people up late at night, and they're very concerned about what this all means in terms of what we are. But I think it can act sometimes as a bit of a distraction from where we really are. And actually, some of the people who are espousing these sorts of narratives are also using AI in very limited, practical ways that are affecting our lives already. So the simulation we live in is already the simulation of certain corporations and billionaires that we actually need to be very critical about. People might talk about being blessed by the algorithm, but actually, it's a, it's a very distinct decision being made at a corporate level that certain stories be highlighted over others. Do you think we fear AI too much? I think there's a certain healthy level of fear when it comes to the applications of AI that could lead to understanding what's going on with it, being critical of it, uh, trying to push back against its non-transparency, identifying who's behind the scenes and making decisions about how, how AI is being used. I think when fear becomes too all-consuming and it distracts you from those questions, I think that's a concern. What is your hope? for the future of AI? 
I would like to see the technology used in appropriate and fair and responsible ways. And I think that's quite a common desire. And we're seeing more and more pushes towards that. My concerns are more about human involvement in making the decisions about how AI is used than AI sort of running away and becoming this disastrous thing in itself. Brilliant. Thank okay. you, Beth. Thank you. Thank you very much.